Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Album Homework Assignment. We've got in the co-captain's chairs today, we've got Ryan Scow from the Hudson Valley Squares and very special guest today, one of our longtime viewers, Joey Spaghetti Lee, is finally joining us on the channel. What's happening, my man? How are you? Good. How are you? How are you, yeah. man? Also so, from the Hudson Valley, too. I was going to say, fellow Hudson Valley are right here. Oh, so, right. Not uh, all the way at all. Yeah. Not, and, and, you know, not these two guys, I, I, you know, when we first got on camera here a couple minutes ago, uh, I, all this time I thought perhaps I didn't know Spaghetti, but uh, as soon as I saw his face, I'm like, I have seen you at shows before. And these mm -hmm. two guys have also ran into each other at shows. Mm -hmm. So it's all in the family almost, right? So it really is. It really, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I could tell that tell that quick story that um, when Ryan and I met at a show in, in New York City in Brooklyn and um, and I remembered his battle jacket. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I saw him on SOT and I I know that dude. Oh, I know that dude. So I was excited. Yeah, there it is. There you go. Slow fag. Slow and, uh, yeah, he's like, I remember that patch. I, I forget names and faces. I never forget battle jackets. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's like 30 years old. I've got a whole pile of them in this room. So I was, I was both excited and a little worried because I know that uh, Ryan's a big fan of the extreme. So I'm like, what am I going to give this guy? But we worked it out. There you go. So they've yeah. both been given their assignments. They've had them for a week and a half or so, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've decided that Ryan's going to go first. He's going to uh, let us know what he's been assigned by Spaghetti Lee uh, and tell us what he thought about it. So Ryan, what do you got? All right, so he gave me the uh, the newest album, No, by the Japanese band uh, Boris. Uh, and uh, I don't know, actually, I'm going to ramble a little bit here. It's actually an interesting album. I enjoyed it. Uh, so Boris is a uh, very, it's a hard band to pin down. It started off as kind of like a, a drone, sludge, doom band. But in the years since, and I'm not really familiar with them, and I'll, I'll get into that too. Uh, in the years since, they've played like 100 million styles. Uh, and... Uh, to me, this is one of those bands. I was trying to all day. I was trying to figure out how to put this. So obviously, guys like us, you've been to a million shows. You have a, you have tons of albums. Love talking about music, and uh, you know, over time, you just meet a lot of people into music, and you have you know good friendships over the years. And I think over time, I think the best way to say this is, some people, like I'll give an example, like Pete, for example. Pete says, "Hey, this band." Sounds like old Uriah Heap or old Deep Purple. I immediately buy it. Sometimes I don't even listen to it. I just go spend the money because I trust the recommendations. But some people, they, they say, oh, check out this band. You really like them. They're really good, you know. And I just think of what that person likes. And it might be a good friend. And I love music with them. But they like different things. So you're like, yeah, I'll get to that. And you never do. And there's, there's millions of bands out there. It's infinite. Only so many hours in a day. So Boris was that band for me for years. I never, I don't. I, well, it turns out I did hear them one point, but for the most part, I wasn't familiar with them. And they've been around a long time, uh, yeah. since the mid, I think, the early 90s. Like They've been putting out albums yeah. uh, going way, way back. And they have a ton of material out, splits, EPs, live albums. Uh, they're one of those crazy bands that they'll come out, and one year they'll put out like four albums in a row in one year. Like just one, It's, just, it's r ridiculous how much stuff they got. Uh, and I just, this whole time, I just kind of like, oh, you know, friends are going to see them, come check them out. And I'm like, yeah, eh, because eh, I was, you know, it just, we, we never really crossed paths. Uh, early on, they were on the label Southern Lord, which uh, actually 20 years ago, if I had heard them, you know, if we are past and cross, because I used to love a lot of stuff on Southern Lord. They were a great doom label back then. And uh, so finally, I'm, I'm sitting down with this album and, uh, I have all this information in my head that people have told me over the years. Like they're kind of crazy. They do all kinds of stuff. So first song on the album is called Genesis. And it's just this heavy freaking doom metal. It's an instrumental, no vocals. Uh, but it's just this really, really, really good recording. Like, I actually like when a lot of this kind of doomy sludge has uh, like kind of a fucked up recording, I guess to say, like a lot of squ you know, squealing feedback and the drums are like this cavern. It's like the toms are just this. Like they're playing inside like a huge cave. I like that sound. I don't like really lo-fi. <laughs> yeah, and not even lo-fi, but just like you know, like really oppressive. Like lots of like, like the band Electric Wizard. I Low guess is a good Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like real, like you know, in the face oppressive. And these guys have that, but it's clean, so it's kind of like a weird mix. And then the second song, 
uh, which is called, uh, I think, uh, like second or third song, Antigon. You know, it starts off a little faster, and then they go into the straight up, like, discharge, DB, like, old school punk, you know, like, rhythm. And I'm like, oh, this is totally different. It's a punk yeah. song. It's a pretty yeah. nasty punk song. Then they go, uh, the song uh, Zerkalo. It goes back to Heavy Stoner Doom. The song Lust, uh, which is cool. It's totally, it's totally different again. It's like this 90s style noise rock, kind of like the Melvins, which is where they're banding exactly. from. Old Melvins. Yeah. yeah, it's like old, old hardcore, old noise rock, like a lot of very 90s, like stuff that used to be on the, uh, I'm going to go obscure here, the old label Amphetamine Reptile from uh, Maryland. Used to put out a lot of this weird, fucked up, heavy, like noisy kind of rock and roll. And then a uh, song Fundamental Error was a straight up old school 80s hardcore song. And then they have a song called uh, Perforation Line. It's again, it's like noise rock. And so there's a little bit of metal on this album, a little bit of doom, a little bit of sludge, man, it's all over the place. And it's cool. Like every song, you know, song to song, it's like almost like a different band. They yeah. pull it off well. And uh, yeah, they, my understanding they, is they have that reputation. Like they've always been mixing up. So I don't know. Yeah, I, they, now that I've heard this and I, I saw a couple of reviews, I read a few reviews and uh, guys were saying like, this is a good album to like check out. Like if you're brand new to the base, their newest album, but God, yeah. down, kind of check it out and yeah so i was uh i was into it and uh you know i like weird i like weird japanese band like the japanese band sai it's freaking weird as hell uh there's this weird man uh, uh really weird like punk hardcore strange japanese band called mel banana who i freaking love I, yeah mel banana is crazy yeah, yeah. off the wall insane band and it's the same thing so boris kind of fits in there uh I actually did hear a split with them with the uh, Doom band Sun, like probably Sun O. Yeah, Sun O. They did a split back in 2006, yeah. which I don't own, but I do remember listening to. So I had heard them before, and uh, I just forgot all about it until I was like doing some research. Like, oh yeah, I remember hearing that long ass time ago. But um, yeah, they, like this band, I thought it was cool because in the early 2000s, I was, I'm, I'm still kind of into the style. But back then, I was more into it, like I said, with Southern Lord. And it's just right. kind of cool because, like, you know, you take doom metal. Obviously, the Grand Pumbaa, All Roads, everything goes to Black Sabbath. But then, I don't know, Grand go Pumbaa. forward a decade, and you get, uh, like, My War by Black Flag. You know, Henry Rollins, Greg Jinn, huge Black Sabbath fans. And they're like, well, we're not going to just play old punk. We're going to mix some Black Sabbath in there. And you could you could tell where the influence was, but Big it time. doesn't sound like a Black Sabbath down, right? And then you get like Melvin's and Neurosis and all this really like heavy shit that isn't really, it's not metal. It's not really metal, but it's like really nasty and heavy. And that's, yeah. that seems kind of like somewhere where Boris was coming from, which I dig. So I don't know. I was, I was really into this album. Yeah. Uh, it was intimidating to look and see how many freaking albums I kind of knew, but I'm actually counting them like, man, they got like, you know, when you put out four albums in one year. You know, that's that yeah. kind of band. Well, that's why I honed in on this particular album because mm -hmm. it, first of all, this album changes up stylistically from tune to tune. You know, every song is a little bit different. Usually, yeah. Um, I was concerned just to uh, to tell the whole SOT community, a little concerned that this might be a little bit too underground. Like, I know Ryan's into underground music. I'm into really underground music. But this album, um, basically, Boris is definitely, if there's one band I can make a direct connection to, it's the Melvins who are really the godfathers of grunge. But this record, it starts out very sludgy, very doomy. And you think right away, oh, this is a, a doom record. But then it kicks in this thrash and this hardcore and there's metal and they're all over the place. And yeah, they have a, a lengthy body of work that is, you know, EPs and half records with other bands. And um, being from Japan, it's very obscure. Um, but I like this record in particular. It's their latest album. And it just touches on all those styles because quite honestly, for me now, where I am in my age and what I listen to in my daily life, um, listening to a straight metal record all the way through, it, it's hard for me to do that. Like I could take 25 minutes of Slayer and then I got to go, go to something else. So, but Boris put this record out and they just changed it up constantly. And, and, and I liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was one of my favorites, one in my top uh, two or three a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, I really like this record. It's uh, it, it, it's funny you say how they mixed it up so much, which I enjoyed. So I was when I'm doing some research on them, I'm looking back. I'm like, man, they had earlier in their career, they had a whole bunch of albums in a row uh, where it's one song 
that song is an hour long and i'm like i'm okay with that kind of stuff <laughs> I've, I've got a couple yeah. albums that are like that like, yeah but I mean, that, like, that's like a uh, that's a commitment right there that's like when yeah. you see that and you know it's like a doom like drone band you're like oh yeah you're like not jerusalem a, you're not, yeah, you're like not sleep kidding. Jerusalem. Oh yeah. yeah, I love that album. Like Bruce Lee, <laughs> Dope Smoker. I love that. That is such a good album. Yeah, Dope like, Smoker, right? Yeah, Dope Smoker. Yeah. You, you can't, uh, you can't dip a toe into that kind of stuff. You got to be like all in. So I'm like, oh, you this, have to commit. Yeah, yeah. This band's not yeah. like, like, but uh, dude, this album, yeah, there's tons of variety, and uh, I kind of knew they did that but to go from like this heavy, you know, sque- uh, squealing feedback like doom metal straight into like this old school, mid '80s like. Bad Brains, Black Flag, mm-hmm. like Ed Kennedy's kind of punk rock song. I'm like, mm-hmm. that was cool. It's cool though. I was totally yeah. into it. I like that stuff. I like all that stuff. Uh, I like the like the juxtaposition of different sounds. Right. Uh, the, the vocals were wild too. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't even really know how to. I don't even try vocals. figuring the vocals out. Yeah, I don't, the vocals you know. are wild, and they change a lot. A lot of screaming. The they did a lot of yeah. screaming, but like not like not distorted. Like when you think of like. Uh, Gutter, that's not guttural death metal screaming. It's more like hardcore. It's really hardcore a little bit. But it's kind of clean Uh, too. I don't know. They're they're hard to describe. I would. They are, and I was surprised being though that they were a Japanese band that they mixed it up stylistically so much. They, I mean, they're really heavily influenced by almost all the underground heavy American movements. You yeah. know, you, you have that almost even like the straight edge hardcore bands that are like, what is this? This is wild. Oh, totally. you know, they, yeah. they name themselves after a Melvin's record. I mean, Boris is a, a, either the first or the second Melvin's album. Um, and yeah, the Melvin's too would change it up. But yeah, Boris is a very, very interesting band. Very interesting. So even, yeah, even among just, in, at least from the stuff I've listened to over the years. I kind of associate Japanese bands with like just way out there weirdness, like just the Japanese bands I've always been into. So this kind of Mel- in there, but yeah, they, uh, I, it makes me want to go back and check out some more of their stuff. So, I mean, uh, I'm going to definitely look uh, for more, but, uh, yeah, Mel- I like this album a whole lot, man. This is, it was really good. It was pretty damn cool. And that makes me like, man, I should have, I should have listened to them, uh, 20 years ago, but it's just <laughs> one of those things, you know, that, that guy at the party, ah, man, Check out Boris, and you're like, yeah, eh, you know, your favorite bands like Pearl Jam or something. Like, all right, you're cool, but eh, I'm not gonna listen to, you know, I want to put your recommendations kind of on the shelf over here, and you know, look at them every once in a while. <laughs> you know, just one of those things. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of an elitist attitude, I guess, but yeah, just you That's know, all it is right. what it is. Yeah, elitist it is, is all right. It is what it is. Uh, so the question yeah. is, now that you've gone through this with this Boris yeah. album, would you buy it? Would you maybe listen to it streaming online every now and then, or would you, after this episode, just forget all about it? Well, uh, it's my uh, what I am going to do is uh, because they have so much stuff, and uh, I probably I'm just going to have to dive in and kind of like look around because I, I like I like diving into brand new bands. Like here's a band with a zillion albums that I've known about but I've never listened to. And just, whoop, let's check them out, see what's going on. I always kind of enjoyed that feeling, you know. Uh, obviously, there's not a million bands that applies to have huge discographies but it's like you know diving into like hawkwind for the first time you're like where the fuck do you start just like you know they've been been around for a million years so it's kind of like that feel so i'm just gonna like kind of dive in check out a lot of albums check out songs and uh you know see where it goes but this was a good album and if this is indicative of kind of like i mean it's hard to say for a band like that because apparently they changed so much but uh yeah it's definitely got my interest to kind of like check more of their stuff out and uh i'm kind of picky with like doom sludge like some of it i really like some of it i'm kind of cold too it depends yeah, a lot on the of hit and miss. a lot of hit and miss with doom yeah it's a lot a of hit and miss it, you, you can't make more mess games. actually <laughs> yeah i know like a lot of the stuff i hear like some bands i i love like i love sleep I like newer bands love electric wizard like kind of stuff like that but uh i i don't know i listen to bands all the time i'm like well all the elements are there but it just leaves me cold like, i don't know right but these guys right, definitely right. Just from that first song, Genesis, I'm like, ah, they get it. Like, they have that heavy, I don't know, it just, it's just in my head, like, how this should sound, you know? And, uh, you know, I got time to play some punk rock. And here's some, like, 90s, like, fucked up noise rock, you know? It's, like, from a, actually kind of reminded me at times of this old New York City band called Unsane, who are, uh, mm, I don't know them. Yeah, they put out a bunch know. of albums back then. It was, it was like, I'm going to say if you, like, took the first Nirvana album and you just made it and smashed it up with, like, a little black flag. It made it like a little more fucked up. Right. It's not metal. It's definitely rock, but it's like just like dirty, 
dirty, like nasty rock. It kind of gave me yeah, that. Feel, so. There's this old New York band, um, early pre-hardcore sort of gutter punk band called Nausea. Um, yes, one of the one of the yeah. guys in Agnostic Front was in it, and uh, okay. it kind of reminded me of that. Like it's got that early, really early pre-hardcore, but really heavy punk. I can hear um, that vibe. Yeah, yeah, it, it was cool though. I definitely enjoyed this album. And yeah, Pete, I will. Cool. Uh, I don't know if I'll go buy it outright because right. we have so many albums. I'm like, well, let's see what else they got. But uh, it definitely enticed me to check out more of their stuff. So well, that's a thumbs up. So that there, that works. That works. All right, them, cool. Follow a thumbs up. I, w- I was into it for sure. Awesome. Very you know, cool. When it, you know, when it comes to buying things nowadays, you know, it, I really support my bands with tickets and T-shirts. Like mm-hmm. I know, like pre-lockdown, I was although I'm running out of closet space. But uh, with all my T-shirts. But, um, yeah, I kind of stopped just needing to buy everything from every band that I love and just start going out there and listen. Because you could just – I don't – I'm not big on streaming. I've never paid a single penny in my life to stream a single note of music. But I have checked it out on YouTube. So, um, you know, with with buying, it's, it's kind of iffy. Especially when, like he said, this is a band I should have heard 20 years ago. Oh, my God, there's like – a dozen of those that I should have heard 20 years ago. I got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I still buy a lot of music, but yeah, then you're like, you know, I'll get it, any band like that. You get into it and you're like, well, this band's really good. Well, like, well now I got like 20 albums to buy. Well, you know, that's a <laughs> lot, that's a lot of money and that's a lot of chunk space. Yeah. And that's a big time commitment to be like, well, now I got to, you know, so yeah, there's, uh, there's some, like, I know me, Chris Allo, Pete, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's like you said, it's a curse, you know, my like, oh, curse I is I real. It's, so it's a blessing and a curse, a blessing <laughs> and a curse. You know what I look for when I get into a band? Honestly, I look on eBay for a lot, like somebody selling. I think I got uh, like nine Primus records for like twenty two dollars on eBay, like all in one chunk. Great yep. score. I, I did that with uh, with Uriah Heap. I bought all the late Ooh. 70s, early 80s albums, which are which hard to find. I bought a like, big box of them. From some dude in Russia for like twelve dollars. Ooh, careful! Those are uh, probably not. Uh, well, they, right. were, I, they were I Russian got... presses. Uh, a little, little murky, a little weird. But you know what? They <laughs> and uh, there you go. That's cool. Like, yeah, they were like two dollars each. So I'm yeah, okay there that. you go. There you fun. go. All right, Spaghetti, what, do you, what was your assignment from Ryan? So I was assigned the band that I should have heard twenty years ago called Meshuga. I'm almost a little embarrassed to say that I have some catching up to do with this band. Um, I had a friend of mine that was a drummer. He's since passed. Um, he was a death metal drummer. You know, that, you know, blast beat crazy guy. And we get in his car and he'd say, you got to check out this band with sugar. And I'm, okay. Cause I'm not a big death metal blast beat vocal guy, but he said, no, you'll like it. You'll like it. You'll like it. So, um, um, Ryan gives me Sugar, Destroy, Erase, Improve from 1995. It was their second record. Um, I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, from what I know from a distance, because I'm not familiar with the entire catalog, um, they've since changed, right, Pete? Stylistically, they've changed it up, become somewhat proggy, and they're not yeah, a straight-up death they, metal band. Yeah, they. I, you know, for me, they never really were a death metal band. I mean, they they did they do those kind of like guttural vocals, but man, their music yeah. is so spacey and different, and really, yeah, you know, yeah. all that all the polyrhythms and stuff. I mean, it's just they're like right. a new entity. Yeah, it's. But yeah, yeah. They, they've definitely since that album, they've definitely changed up a lot longer songs and right you know, a lot more groove. I think this because I mean the bottom end of their music now is just absolutely cavernous. It's just crazy. But uh, well. It, I could hear that in in this record. First of all, there's moments on this record that I could hear it's right in line with with its time when it came out, uh, 1995. I could hear a little bit. I'm like, well, that sounds a little bit like Helmet, a little bit. But I could also tell that in some of these tunes, they have uh, they change it up to where there's almost this soft melody interludes, and you could see that they went somewhat like proggy, or they 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 had a lot of room for it expansion they're way more than just boxed in metal band there was definitely a lot of room for growth with this band the other thing was the drumming the time signatures from this drummer were very unique it was hard to pinpoint down it wasn't that blast beat motorboat just constant this guy was changing it up and changing it up 
And from what I've read on this record, it was the, it's their second album, but they added a rhythm guitar player. Mm-hmm. And I don't know the whole body of work, but I would imagine that changed them up a little bit. You know, there's a moment on this album, uh, the sixth or seventh track, that I heard this pretty little interlude that almost sounded to me, Pete, like, like almost Joe Satriani surfing with the alien. Just a little bit, just maybe 30 seconds of it. And 30 seconds of that on an album that was pretty much a heavy, grinding, mid-70s, groove metal, thrash metal. It was like, wow, that, that's cool that they have all these little tools in their toolbox uh, and room for growth. It was, it was really surprising. And um, it made for a great listen. I mean, uh, I enjoyed this record. I enjoyed this record and I uh, look forward to getting really a lot deeper into the catalog. So it was super cool. I mean, um, it had a lot of crunchy riffs in the beginning, basically opens up. There's some technical stuff in there. Um, You know, I don't want to call it math metal or anything. It's not like a Dillinger escape plan, but it was, they're, they're going at it. There was moments where they had the um, almost the machine gun riffage on the guitar. I kind of call it the anthrax uh, riffity riff that skippity sort of riff. Um, it was cool. They were kind of, you know, all over the place a bit. And I liked it, but the vocals took it just to the point where I could tolerate it, right? If they just went a little bit more into the almost vomiting, I'm sorry, but like, I don't like it when it gets too guttural and they took it right there. I, I really like this record. I really do. I'm going to keep my eye on this band. It's uh, again, like Ryan said, you know, 20 years too late, but what am I going to do? So much music, so little time, you know? I, I tell you, I, I actually, I went back to when I was in high school in the 90s. Uh, I loved that album. And uh, I had a weird relationship with that band because it's funny you mentioned Anthrax because, like, to me, their first album uh, called Contradictions Collapse, it's almost like a, it's very thrash metal. Like, I think they feel like they really came from a thrash metal background. Mm-hmm. You can see where they were going, but, like, it's got a lot of Injustice for All and, like, I like thrash, like Coroner and Watchtower. Like it's like thrash, but like a lot of like guitar, like you know wizardry. And then in this album, you could still hear that that thrash. It's like yeah, definitely. Together, but it's still there. But then they're doing all this different stuff. And like you said, a lot of like the Joe Satriani kind of guitars, which I think is a lot because they're a uh, little bit, guitars, little whatever. little bit, like little segues, little parts. There was definitely like even hardcore. I hate to keep going yeah. back to hardcore. There were moments on this record like, wow, these guys, they're, they're definitely listening to certainly New York hardcore. Um, Plus, uh, the vocalist Jens is, is he, he's basically what he's doing. He's singing like he's got like that hardcore bark. I mean, that's the, the interesting totally, thing. Yeah. About he's sure. right in that line with that. Yeah, sound. his exactly. vocal style is almost when you really get down to it, almost doesn't fit the band, but it's one of the, the many things that make them so unique. And Fred exactly. Rickmore, the lead guitar player is a huge Alan Holdsworth fan. So he's just, oh, yeah. Like, well, well, yeah, that would make sense. And I, you know, I went track for track taking notes on like each individual track and the word hardcore vocals, like almost, almost on every one. Um, yeah, there was a lot of, there's a lot of grinding. You know what I almost heard? Remember the band helmet? I kind of got a helmet oh, vibe. Yeah, song, totally. right? Like in the production. In the yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like clean, real clean, like really clean. It's um, almost like uh, it has like a robotic feel. Like I, I know that back d- in the yes. days, they used mechanical to get is what I word. I wrote mechanical. Yeah, yeah. They would uh, just because of that, they got compared to Fear Factory a lot, and they have those like choppy staccato rhythms. Uh, right. I always thought I, I thought they were more interesting band, but like that came out the same year as Demanufacture by Fear Factory, and it's like that robotic like uh, it just has a very similar feel in that way. So. Uh, yeah, but with the hardcore, I don't know. I always I like that album, and I I hadn't listened to it in quite a few years. I was gonna say uh, right. until uh, we we started talking about it, and I put it on the other day a couple of times, and I'm like, man, this is still a good, good heavy, you know, but you know, different. And uh, I'll be honest, the, the album after that, Chaos Sphere, I kind of like, but after I don't know, I just kind of lost touch with them after that. Like, uh, yeah, I've heard some stuff here and there. Like Pete said, it's it's way groovier much bigger bottom end it's not it's not bad it's just you know because i know people are gaga about them it's just personal taste but uh that yeah, 90s, they, uh, they have a very uh, hardcore really they have cool. a hardcore following like a real loyal audience oh, i'd oh, imagine yeah. right yeah, yeah they do. um it's funny that when this record came out pete like remember in the early late very late 80s very early 90s was a very strange time 
from metal where you went prog you went proggy pete right i went down the jam band rabbit hole i went full-blown deadhead into fish i discovered zappa i was like really into that so i kind of put really heavy aggressive music kind of on the shelf for a long time which is why i missed like this band i even I had to catch up on pantera and sepultura you know the metal bands that came a little later because i was just you know totally full-blown deadhead and into zappa and stuff so i missed out on this like era of metal groove groove is a word that i wrote down quite a bit too there's a there's a strong pulsing groove with a drummer that has a time signature i can't really it's it's interesting it's very interesting yeah i mean um, you know tomas on drums is just an absolute octopus i mean he's ridiculous and then you know like you <laughs> mentioned they brought in martin on rhythm guitar and right it's like this big eight string guitar and that also adds because a lot of Is times they don't even have was? a bass player so yeah. it's like it's just to do that on that cool. album though i thought they added that a little later in the career but i uh, i think on chaos fear actually so it's probably yeah. the album after yeah there was uh their their, their main guitar the main songwriter of frederick put out a solo album in the late 90s on relapse records which is just like you take those little weird bits he did on this album and he made like a full album of it. Full album like of it, yeah. Freak out wow. the all in media. Yeah. yeah. It, I don't know if it's easier or hard to find now because I haven't, no one's mentioned it I, that I've heard in ages. I got a copy floating around somewhere, but yeah, I have, yeah, yeah, him being a guitar nut with all this spacey, weird, you know, effects and crazy stuff and awesome solos. And uh, it kind of reminds me if I had to compare that to anything, it's almost like. Buckethead, like some of the weirder Buckethead albums. Wow. Like the, the guy's obviously a genius on guitar, but he's not playing in a traditional wow. way at all. Yeah. So it's, See, it's I didn't cool even stuff. go. I, I didn't even go that deep into looking at it. Relapse record? Did they? Did they go under? Is Relapse uh, still? No, they're still, they're still yeah. 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 Yeah, they're still. All right. But yeah, so, I would say if you, if, you, if you like that enough and you want to investigate them further, I mean, their next two are really good: Chaos, Fear, and Nothing. Uh, arguably as good as Destroy a Race, but just different. Like they're they're just a little bit different. But I mean, most people cite the album you got as their classic. Still, right? This is the one. Yeah. This is this is their their staple album. Yeah, yeah it was, no, I was yeah. interested. I'm going to check more of them out. Their album art too. The cover. I mean, I just looked over the covers. It's like really cool, really trippy. That one was like a daily listen to me, a daily listen for me in high school, actually, which is. It's weird that I kind of, as years went on, kind of fell out with them a little bit for no, you know, no reason, just kind of happens sometimes. But yeah, back when I was like 16, 15, 17, I used to listen to that every fucking day, <laughs> pretty religiously. I really, wow. really. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, for 95. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, one of, they're one of Butch's, Butch Jones's favorite bands. He loves them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, Butch is big into, oh, into yeah, my sugar. Yeah. 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 My buddy that was a drummer, I just, I could just gushed over them. Just couldn't believe it. He really, he really loved them. He's like, you got, you would like this. You would really, really like this. And I uh, mean, I'll say too, it's it's been a couple of years, uh, at least ten since I've seen them. But uh, that's it's stuff. That stuff translates very well live because it's yeah. uh, even though it's very off kilter and the rhythms are kind of all over the place, uh, it still has the effect of generating these massive, nonstop, ridiculous mosh pits the yeah. whole time because they really go heavy on the strobe lights and just like the rhythms kind of. I'd imagine, yeah. Forward. Yeah, they're just up there. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. pick out those reps who are like, that's going to be the part where everybody just blows blows up. Yeah, yeah. yeah they up. even had like a heavy distortion on their bass where it's a lot of chugga, 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 grind, mm -hmm. heavy, that's go cool. at it. Like I could see the pits getting crazy on this for sure. I, I love Definitely. that. Definitely. Uh, I love a heavy distorted bass like that. So that really oh, it's is. really cool, man. Especially on like the second track uh, called "Beneath." I mean, there's yeah. a really heavy, heavy bass riff into this hardcore vocal again, and and the drumming was very. It's it's weird. It's it, it, I don't know how to even describe it. I have to find it's it, the time signatures. Are, it's like it's almost like two drummers. So how's this one guy doing this? <laughs> it's really that right, really that cool. He pulls really it cool. off live too, like flaw. From what I recall, he pulled it off flawlessly. You know, super, super tight band on stage. Yeah, these guys are still together, still putting out albums, huh? Yeah, they, they are. put one out in about five years, but I think they got something in the works. So uh, yeah. Well, they come back to New York. I'm buying a ticket and a T-shirt. Yeah, mm -hmm. you should. They're they're really good live. I've seen them a number of times. So definitely. So awesome. it sounds like. Uh, would you buy it? Would you just stream it occasionally? I would yeah. buy it. I would buy it. I would buy it for sure. And actually, I'm probably going to start buying some of their records for sure. 
Yeah. Cool. Cool. I like it. So we got two winners today. Got to love that. Oh, so uh, good score. Two, two thumbs up. <laughs> two bands we should have heard uh, 20 years ago and it was uh, successful. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. A lot of catch up. Yeah, so spaghetti, you, spaghetti, you wanted to say some uh, words to some of your fellow uh, loyal viewers and whatnot before we uh, before we get out of here today? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's a bunch of guys in the chat room because I came out of the chat room like everybody else. I want to thank Armando, first and foremost, for setting the bar pretty high for being like, you know, the, the Sea of Tranquility super fan. Thanks, Armando. I had to take notes and do my homework. <laughs> Um, but I, I, you know, I I'm, I'm reluctant or hesitant to start naming people by name because I'm going to forget some of them and they're going to go, oh, spaghetti, you forgot me. But, um, Eric Porter and Bangle Gangster and, um, those guys, there's a gentleman, Pete, I want to mention, I'd like to mention, uh, named Michael Crowther that comments often in the comment section. He is absolutely fantastic. The guy could almost write for Rolling Stone. His knowledge of music is immense. He lives in Euro, he's an Englishman. I think he lives in oh, Italy. Patrick, Just, Patrick Crowther. Patrick Crowther. Yes, I yes, am sorry, yeah, Patrick. Nice guy. By the really, way, really, really Patrick, Patrick is watching. Patrick, thank you for sending. I have to give these to Butch, but he went to Ireland recently and got some really cool stuff from Ireland uh, for oh, Butch nice. and I. And uh, cool. yeah, so top, Patrick, top, top notch, yeah, pa top notch, guy. Patrick Crowther, and everybody else I forgot because I'm terrible with names. Gary and, Joyce and uh, Gary um, Eric. Yeah. So yeah, so I should have wrote them down, but I didn't. I didn't. I should have. I should. They all know who they are. They all know. All right, you know who you are. Yeah. Spaghetti says hello. Shout out. Shout out on behalf of all the SOT chat and comment section. There so, you go. Thank you for having me, man. This is really you got cool. it. Great to have you on. And I'm in the uh, Hudson Valley. If you need an extra square, just saying. Okay. There you go. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> just say, just say it. There That's you cool. go. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. This is a fun episode of Album Homework Assignment. I want to thank uh, both Ryan and Spaghetti for uh, doing a great job here on two albums they'd never heard before. We got two winners here. And uh, very cool. Stay tuned for the next episode next Sunday, although I think we're going to pretty soon be doing this show twice a week. So stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, it's a popular so, uh, awesome. business on the web at www.seeatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the, the damn, damn time. time. For Spaghetti Lee, otherwise known as Joey, and Ryan Scow, I am Pete Pardo. See you all real soon. Have a good rest of the weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.